Hello, YouTube. Shane here. Sorry about the freaky computer voice, but this medication I'm on following my latest surgery makes speaking difficult. Coonkiller92 wants 25 examples of tent oven, tell and delivery lies. Why 25? I don't know, but I did a cursory review of ovens let yours and found 40. So even if you dismiss some of these, there's no way you could dismiss enough to make it less than 25. I won't even get into his fake doctorate or his lie about teaching high school science for 15 years when he really just homeschooled his kids. These will all be about his scientific claims. They won't be cases where he's simply wrong. They're all either cases where he knows he's wrong because of his original source or because he's been corrected and continued stating the false information anyway. Line number one, the first law of thermodynamics tells us that matter cannot be created or destroyed. No, the first law states that the total energy of a closed system is constant. Matter and energy can change their form all they want and even be created and destroyed as in the Casimir effect, as long as the total amount of matter and energy in the universe does not change. Line number two, the second law of thermodynamics says everything tends toward disorder. No, it says that the net entropy of the universe must increase. That's a very different thing which I have already explained in my video. Creationists and the Second Law. Line number three, the Big Bang Theory says that about 20 billion years ago all the dust in space started drawing together into this little bitty dot, and it was spinning real fast. Finally, it exploded out into space, Ron. Forgiving the fact that it's really 13.7 billion years ago, nothing's ruined, because matter, space, and time were all created in the Big Bang. So there was no dust, no space for it to be in, and no way for it to draw together. It didn't explode out into space, it was an explosion of space itself. And there is no sense in which it could be said to be spinning, because there is nothing else that it could be spinning in relation to. Line number four, this is called the conservation of angular momentum. One of the laws says in a frictionless environment, if pieces fly off a spinning object they tend to spin the same direction, because the outer part is already spinning faster than the inner part. The law of conservation of angular momentum merely states that in a closed system, the sum of the momentum is constant. Objects can end up spinning in different directions as long as the rate of spin makes the total angular momentum of the system match what it was originally. Oh, and the outer part does not spin faster than the inner part, that's just silly. All of these so far are basic scientific principles that he would have seen if he had even bothered to look them up. So either he's deliberately lying about what they say, or he's lying about being informed about them. And he has been corrected by many others, so they can only be deliberate distortions. Line number five. All of the ancient astronomers said that Sirius was a red star. Today it is a white dwarf. Hovind knows perfectly well that Sirius is a binary since he put this fact in his own slide. Sirius B is the white dwarf. Sirius A is the brightest star in the night sky whereas white dwarfs aren't even visible without a telescope. Line number 6. In 1954, Isaac Asimov calculated that there would be at least 54 feet of dust on the moon because the moon is billions of years old. They calculated the accumulation rate to be one inch of dust every 10,000 years. The calculation was a maximum value, but Hovind pretends that it was a required value. He also ignores the other studies which correctly predicted the amount of dust on the moon. Line number seven. Evolution is a religion, nothing more, nothing less. Evolution is just something people prefer to believe because of their lifestyle. Hovind knows better. There are many devout Bible-believing Christians who accept evolution, including Dr. Kenneth Miller. Line number 8. One part of a mammoth was carbon dated at 29,000 years old. Another part is 44,000 years old. Here's two parts of the same animal. That's from USGS Professional Paper number 862. Hovind makes a big mistake here. He cites his source. Christianists are too stupid and too easily duped to check sources, so he's gotten away with it. But if you actually look at the source you'll see that these measurements are from two different mammoths. The source makes it clear there is no way Hovind did not know that. Line number 9. Animals with similar density are varied together. 
Words are frequently found on top not because words evolved last, but because words were the last ones to drown in the flood. Then you'd see pterosaurs with ostriches, mammoths with elephants, similar-sized lizards and amphibians together. You don't. Line number 10. There are several swamps in Africa that are still reporting creatures like pterodactyls. They are not as big as they used to be. The 50-footers couldn't fly in today's atmosphere. The air is too thin. This is complete fantasy. No one has ever been able to get a source from having done this, so apparently he just made it up. Plus, the atmosphere has been the same for the last 200 million years. Line number 11. I believe in fire-breathing dragons. It is possible to blow fire. You say, what? Yep. It's possible. There is an insect that lives in South Florida and in Central America that is called the Bombardier Beetle. There is no animal that can blow fire. The Bombardier Beetle spouts hot chemicals under pressure. This is not fire, by any stretch of the most diluted imagination. Line number 12. The Bombardier Beetle has two chemicals in storage compartments in his rear end. The chemicals are hydrogen peroxide and hydroquinone. When these two chemicals are mixed together, they explode. Boom. No, they don't. Mix these two chemicals together and nothing happens. Kent has been shown this demonstration by scientists before, and he continued to repeat the lie. Line number 13. He has a third chemical that is mixed in there with him. The third chemical is called the inhibitor. He has a fourth chemical. The fourth chemical is in the outer chamber. He squirts it in at the very last possible second. The fourth chemical is the neutralizer. The neutralizer eliminates the inhibitor so the first two chemicals can explode. Is this too complicated? There are no such chemicals in the Bombardier Beetle. Line number 14. Before the 1800s, almost everybody believed that the world was only six or seven thousand years old. They held to the creationist or the Christian worldview of history. The Earth, being millions of years old, predates Darwin by at least a century. Line number 15. One of the first scoffers in the past couple of hundred years was a guy named James Hutton. James Hutton was one of the first men to really propose that the Earth was more than six or seven thousand years old. Not so. In 1779, the Comte du Buffon estimated a minimum age for the Earth at 75,000 years. Of course, the ancient Greeks, Hindus, and others all had beliefs of the Earth being much older as well. Isaac Newton believed that the Earth and the universe were infinitely old. Line number 16. Everything must be interpreted in light of the geologic column. For example, the Jurassic layer contains dinosaur bones. Therefore, if you find a dinosaur bone, it's automatically classified as a Jurassic layer. If this were true, they wouldn't have known ahead of time where to dig to find Tiktaalik. Line number 17. As Darwin read the book about the principles of geology, his faith in scripture was destroyed. Darwin came back a doubter, a skeptic, a scoffer. From origin of species, he who believes that each species was independently created to admit this view is, as it seems to me, to reject the real for an unreal, or at least for an unknown, cause. It makes the works of God a mere mockery and deception. Line number 18. No, man never had a tail. We have a tail on a coccyx, and in the womb a tail begins to grow and is reabsorbed. Sometimes a human will be born with a full tail which is generally removed surgically. This is known as an atavism. Line number 19. Because they cannot find a missing link, many evolutionists have gone to a new theory. The new theory is called punctuated equilibrium. The evolutionists are saying maybe a reptile laid an egg and a bird hatched out, and that is why we cannot find any transitional fossils. Evolution happened in jumps. Punky says nothing of the kind. The jumps still take millions of years. Punky just says that evolution happens more quickly in small, isolated populations, and much more slowly in large populations. This is perfectly in line with Darwin's theory. Gould himself corrected Hovind on this, 